altered states of consciousness have become so respectable in the past few years that they are now known simply as ASCs. The desire to have peak experiences, to transcend the limitations of ordinary consciousness, is a drive so basic that it seems we are born with it. Geniuses almost invariably report that their most creative ideas have come when they were free from their thought processes and were able to touch higher places inside. Musicians frequently consider themselves channels for music that comes from the spheres, say that their rational mind played no part in the composition. This young composer, Iasos, is one of these. His electronic music comes to him when he's in an altered state of consciousness. There are three major states of consciousness, waking, sleeping, and dreaming. An altered state of consciousness is one in which sensing, thinking, or acting have a distinctly different quality from our ordinary state. Drugs can alter consciousness. Alcohol, amphetamines, LSD. Meditation is a way of altering consciousness without drugs. In meditation, the senses are open, but thoughts and feelings are not acted upon. Meditators describe a spectrum of effects, from relaxation to a feeling of oneness with the universe. these, trance and hypnosis. An altered state can break through the narrow spectrum of normal consciousness and expand our awareness. Despite the accumulation of scientific data, we still know very little about these states of consciousness and how to produce them. Ram Das, Harvard professor turned yogi, has studied the methods of both East and West. William James talks of these states of consciousness in writings in 1906 when he said our normal waking consciousness is but one special type of consciousness whilst all about it parted from it by the filmiest of screens there lie other types of mentality entirely different and he goes on to say that no view of our universe in its totality can be complete which fails to take these other types of consciousness into consideration. But how to enter into them is the question. Through the ages, meditation has been one of the methods for achieving these states of awareness, stilling the restlessness of the observing mind. Albert Einstein said, I did not arrive at my understanding of the fundamental laws of the universe through my rational thought process. And in fact, most of the great breakthroughs for mankind and civilization have come through men who were able to touch these higher places inside where they got free for a moment of their senses and their thought process. There have always been some who could touch these higher places inside. Reverend Paul Solomon uses his ability to enter trance and contact another level of consciousness to help solve medical problems. He has been called a second Edgar Casey because he prefers to work with doctors whose patients have baffling diseases beyond their help. This patient, Louise Chesna, has a bone disease for which there is no known cure. She was brought to Paul by her doctor. With your direction and your purpose in Christ. Paul has no training in medicine and in fact is not even familiar with medical terminology. 
Although Paul can put himself into trance, he finds it easier when aided by someone experienced at trance induction. You shall now find yourself resting in an enjoyable state in the arms of the Divine Father and giving yourself to his mystic experience. Upon completion of the channeling, you will return to the body feeling rested and refreshed and all bodily functions will return to normal. His body convulses when entering trance. You will have before you the records and physical body of Louise Chesna, born September 28, 1926, in Pittsfield, Massachusetts. You will examine the body at all levels and report the conditions found. Give that information concerning etiology, method of treatment, and prognosis. You will then answer questions. Yes, we have the physical body and the conditions with especially the concerns for the formation and replacement of bone salts. Paul Solomon discovered his ability to enter trance quite by accident when he and a friend were experimenting with hypnosis. But Paul had had years of practice at contemplation and prayer and had already learned to focus awareness, the essential trait for inducing an ASC, to focus awareness. In etiology, we find these combinations of causative factors first in the bowel. Depression of the thyroid at the same time is the balance that we seek in the endocrine. Scenes in the film are excerpts from a reading which took an hour and gave the patient detailed instructions for cure. And during the period of taking the broth, use only fresh, raw, or steamed vegetables during this period, no meat of any kind, no oils of any kind, avoid milk and milk products, though yogurt can and should be taken to prepare for receiving these. A coffee enema will cleanse this and allow for the absorption of that we need in the system. For you see, what we have here is irregularity in the replacement of tissue that is quite... Did natural. Paul's prescriptions help Louise Chesna? It's too soon to tell. We know that he diagnosed her disease accurately and according to her doctor gave a reasonable regimen for cure. That is astounding in itself. An instant cure would be a miracle. In California, there is a former opera star who can also contact other realities. Annette Martin discovered a few years ago that she had this talent and now works with doctors to solve health problems. Irving Hartley, one of the producers of this film, has atherosclerosis, or hardening of the arteries. Although Annette had never met or heard of Irving and wanted to know absolutely nothing about him before starting this reading, she gave a remarkably accurate picture of his blood flow problem. They must be repairing, they must be repairing because they're sewing it up. Okay, what are they repairing? Her assistant helps by asking okay. pertinent oh, questions. Okay. It seemed as though Annette were seeing what actually happened nine months before when Mr. Hartley nearly died on the operating table when his carotid artery was cut to remove deposits of cholesterol. Passageways, passageways, white, it's not supposed to be white, it's not supposed to be white, it's supposed to be red, it has to have flow, it's not flowing, the blood is not flowing through there, why isn't the blood... 
compare the blood. Snip, snip, okay. Snip, snip. We have to. We're cutting in and taking out and repairing and adding, adding. They're adding. They're adding to it and adding and cutting and sewing and sew it up quick. The hours. Look at the clock. Oh, wipe the head. Oh. What are, okay, and that, what are they? They're operating. They're take, operating. Okay. In, what were they taking out? They're taking. Uh, 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 it's got to be the heart. It's got to be the heart. The blood's got to flow. It's got to flow through. Why? It, uh, taking it out. Oh, he's going. Oh, he's going. Careful, he's going. <sighs> Not much time. Look at the clock, I see the clock. <sighs> the clock, I see the clock. The hours are going by in the sewing, and he's going. <sighs> Repairing. This ability Repairing. to see into the past and sewing. future to contact and gain advice from that great reservoir of knowledge just beyond the average person's reach. Is this a faculty toward which we are all evolving, or is it simply a matter of re-educating a portion of our brain left fallow for so long? Scientific study shows that the left brain is used for verbal and analytic thought, the right for intuition and understanding patterns. Paul and Annette have apparently learned to quiet the left brain and let the intuitive become dominant. People are experimenting with all sorts of methods for developing the right brain. Divica Spino, who teaches courses on new directions in sport at the University of California, runs eight miles every morning. One of the things that I began to find out as I started to use these different training methods and experiment with them over the years was that I would go off on my morning runs at dawn almost as a tribute to the day of the gift of life. And then I would use the run to just quiet my mind and to allow it just a fresh flowing through of many feelings and impressions. And I would start to visualize the faces and bodies of people that I was coaching and working with. And I found that I began to get just incredibly clear about different people I was working with that were having specific troubles. And I would get back from my run and I'd make a phone call. And I was finding I was extremely accurate at this. And they'd say, Dervika, how did you know? In her classes before the workout, she uses meditation and visualization to unleash the intuitive brain. And now you can begin to feel this light starting to come down into your cellular structure, down through your shoulders, streaming out through your hands. And you can actually take this energy now into your lungs, down your spinal column. And you can just feel yourself now, filled with this beautiful white light. Then in this altered state, they run for many athletes report extraordinary highs when their bodies are pushed to the ultimate. One of the things that we've come from in our culture is a whole sense of our sport tradition that has used the body as a competitive vehicle to beat down and compete with other people. And the thing that, that I'm trying to work on is a way of training the body, training our consciousness to be in harmony and see that our own essence, our own spirit, is completely linked with the spirit of everything else that's alive and vital in the universe. To be a catalyst, to open up those seed creative processes within a person so that it can start to take off without need of a leader or a coach or a guru, but really from the point of view of owning yourself and carving your own map toward your own higher consciousness. A higher sense of being in the universe, of being connected with all living things, of being connected to each other. We often read that a psychic has solved a crime, but one need not be a psychic to do this. Christopher Hills, a spiritual teacher and founder of the University of the Trees in Boulder Creek, California, has proven this. Mr. Hill sometimes uses a divining rod to focus his consciousness, as was recently reported by the sheriff of Santa Cruz County. I'm Deputy Chikuris. 
the Santa Cruz County Sheriff's Office. And recently we had a robbery in the area where we were unable to locate the money after we had apprehended the suspect. I was in charge of a five-man search team, and after four hours of intensive searching, we had to give up the search. I contacted Mr. Christopher Hills, who is a student of consciousness, who has uh, some ways of locating things with a divining rod. We asked him to assist. After uh, the request was made, he agreed. No one has ever been able to adequately explain why divining rods work. Is it possible that they simply help to focus the consciousness so that the holder becomes aware of what is ordinarily unconsciously perceived? Christopher Hill says yes, that the dowser must consider himself to be the instrument, not the divining rod. Okay. Over there? Yeah. Okay. Uh, over there. I think it's over there. Very shortly thereafter, he found the, uh, the money that was missing that we were unable to locate. And uh, must admit, it was quite a feat. Uh, we couldn't do it. All right, now I want you to sit back. Dr. Joseph Spear of Tulsa, Oklahoma, uses a variety of pre-recorded tapes to produce altered states in patients. Sensory input is limited. Only dim light and the sounds that come through the earphones, either the tape or live work with the therapist. At designated periods, the patient can talk to Dr. Spear, who is in a central control room. One of the major problems in psychotherapy has been to get quickly to the source of the problem. By using altered states of consciousness where an individual is more relaxed, we can very, very quickly get to the traumatic event or events that set up the attitudes to cause the problem. We have approximately 400 to 500 different tapes. Each tape is pre-recorded and it's always the same. I write the coding for the particular tapes that I want the individual patient to have. And then my assistant will pick those tapes up and insert them into the tape deck for that particular individual. This way, each individual gets kind of like a prescription of standardized suggestions that we know many people have been exposed to, and we have an excellent idea of their effectiveness. The tapes produce relaxation, which in turn produces receptivity and an inward knowingness. The patient is then open to receive suggestions of the doctor, which are designed to help him heal himself. Deeply relaxed, eh? Deeper and deeper relaxed. Right now, going even deeper into ASC during the next few moments. Dr. Spear watches the patient on closed circuit television. He can work with one while monitoring three others. Any body language, such as restlessness, yields clues to sensitive areas. Put your mind way, way back to that experience, and I want you to tell me what happened. In the beginning, the patient is led to this inner place by Dr. Spear. During the next few days... After a few sessions, the patient begins to do this for himself, following the guidelines of the pre-recorded tapes. And we'll discuss it. One of the problems about doing this is that, in many cases, the individual has to be strengthened psychologically to begin to look at their problems. And so by using the particular form of altered states of consciousness that we use here, we try to strengthen the individual so that they can begin to look at themselves and to look at their problems in a more objective way and in a more adult way. In our experience, many of the people that come in here have difficulty liking themselves or respecting themselves. Walt was one of these. At that time, uh, I had been told by several doctors that I had only a year and a half to live due to heart trouble, 
hypertension, high blood pressure, and diabetes. Uh, my medical dosage now is cut down to just one dose a day. But most of the symptoms are gone. I have very little trouble with my heart, with climbing stairs, or anything else. Um, I think the basic thing about the therapy is the fact that it does give you the incentive to accomplish things for yourself. And in this respect, you're able to go ahead and set your own goals and travel at the rate that you want to. Nothing is forced on you and nothing is pushing you in the direction to recover yourself until you're able to find your own problems and realize that uh, the body can heal itself. With Dr. Spears therapy, this is basically what it comes down to is the fact that he shows you the way and uh, all you have to do is allow your body to take care of itself and it will. Tammy was another. And the neatest thing I think about this therapy is, is that uh, there's nobody you can really give the credit to except for yourself. Dr. Spear gives you all the guidelines, but you can, when you finish, you can just say, I did that on my own. A few days, they jammed me Joe, with much of it like ex-convict, 17 years on heroin, in prison most of his adult life, came to Dr. Spear five years ago. Now a dependable citizen with his own business. You know, I see a big change in myself. You know, there's still things I got to work on. I'm not Mr. Perfect, don't get me wrong. Uh, but I see a lot of changes in myself, a lot of different ways of looking at things, and uh, I feel I'm doing good. Other people see differences in me. And uh, I, think, I think it's very good, really. If, you, if you're looking for help. If you're not looking for help, nothing's going to help you. You know, you have to want it. But uh, it really gives you a chance to, to check things out. Dr. Gerald Jampolsky whose child center is across the bay from San Francisco, uses hypnosis to help children with learning problems. It's a way to help you learn better in school, like reading. I became interested in helping children with reading problems because I had problems in learning to read when I was in the first, second, and third grade. I saw things backwards and had perceptual problems. And so I've always been interested in trying to find a shortcut method of doing this. Our usual educational system tends to teach children to think logically uh, and award children who have good rote memory. Well, lots of children with perceptual problems have very poor rote memory. And you'll see on the film a method that we've developed that makes use of the children's imagination by helping them get in an altered state of consciousness as a way of learning to read. And so the first thing we're going to do is have you begin to open and close your eyes. Can you start doing that? Just open and close your eyes. Keep opening and closing. And now begin to use your imagination and feel that there's a weight on top of your eyelids so that each time that you open your eyes, it's going to be a little harder to open. And feel your eyelids getting heavier and heavier and heavier. By just using your imagination, feeling your eyelids very, very heavy so that your eyes don't want to open. And just keep them closed so they just can't open now. Your eyelids are very, very heavy, and they're keeping your eyes closed. That's very nice. Dr. Jampolsky uses standard techniques to induce a light trance. And when the children are completely relaxed, he guides them in the use of imagery and eventually to a better self-image. This is an abbreviated demonstration. All right, now just relax now. And what we're going to do now is take a little walk in the country, up in the mountains, and we're going to become one with nature. We're going to see beautiful colors of green in the trees and in the plants. Notice how blue the sky is and how beautiful the clouds are. And feel a sense of oneness with yourself and the animals and the birds that you can hear, the creek that you can hear, and just feel a whole oneness with yourself and everything about you. Now, keeping your eyes closed, remember that one of the reasons that a lot of us have trouble in learning is because we have a lot of bad experiences or a lot of painful experiences. So this next exercise is a way of kind of getting rid of those kind of pains. Now I want you to put your hands on your head now. That's it and pretend like you're going to take your brains out of your head. Now take your brains out of your head and put them on the floor, all the way on the floor. All right. 
Now, there's a hose there on the right-hand side. Put it in your hand and begin washing that brain out. And wash away all of the black stuff and all the crud that's there that's gotten in the way of your learning. So your brain's going to be much lighter now. Do a good job now, because you want to get rid of all those painful experiences. All right, now put your brains now back in your head. Sit up in your chairs and put your brains right back in your head, all the way back. That's fine. And put your hands at your side. Now I want you to imagine that there's a motion picture screen in front of you, and that you see yourself on that motion picture screen reading. <coughs> Now imagine there's a door on that screen, and take your right hand and open the door. All right, and climb inside that body on the screen. All right, that's beautiful. Now you're that person on that screen reading. That is you there. Now I'd like you to use your imagination and put that picture of yourself in your blood cells. So now your blood cells are going all around your body with that picture of you reading and reading without effort and reading very successfully. So now you are that person, that person is you, who is reading and reading with pleasure. And you found a very new way of reading that doesn't take any effort and that's very, very pleasurable. Now the results were, in one month, that the average increase in reading skill was a year and a half, and one child jumped from a fourth grade level to a sixth grade level in reading. Our son was involved with Jerry, Dr. Jeff Polsky in his project at the Child Center approximately four years ago. And while the, set, the project was to help the children increase their reading ability, we felt that the real benefit was from the fact that Craig's self-esteem was so increased. There are some real practical implications of this study. Namely, it is the fact that we can begin to use relaxation techniques and techniques of altered states of consciousness to assist in the learning process. To me, it makes little difference what you call it, whether you call it hypnosis or whether you call it a meditative process or a gestalt type of technique. To me, there are two important points. One is to assist people to relax and not to think, to put their state of mind into a attending just one thing where they're just a state of being, where they're completely relaxed. The second point is to create a kind of mental picture about what they want to experience. And you, when you put those two things together and have a belief system that that is what's going to happen, it results in an increase in the learning process. These practical applications of altered states of consciousness have fantastic implications for all of us. The integration of the rational and intuitive spheres of our mental life is the key to wholeness of body and mind. By ridding ourselves of the learned habits of worrying, fearing, and scattering our mental energy, we can get to a core feeling of joyful transcendence, a heightened awareness, a positive self-image, and a feeling of attunement with the whole of the universe.